Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. I know I look like Saitama. I know I look like ray tracing is on. I know I should get a tattoo on the back of my head so that I look like Agent 47. But I did it for the children. We raised $10,000 for charity in case anybody didn't watch yesterday's Hot News where I talked about this whole bald situation going on. I'm still getting used to it just like you guys are. Anyways, let's move on into today's video sponsor which is FreshBooks, my friends. FreshBooks is the online accounting software that allows you to run your business a lot more efficiently than you would otherwise think. It's got quick, easy invoicing. You can put your own custom branding on it. You get pri you get all the things that you need. You get multi-currency stuff, you get client deposits, recurring invoices, online payments, late payment reminders, automation, mobile expense. I, like, I can't even read through this list fast enough to let you know everything that FreshBooks has because they make making sure that you're getting paid for your online business so gosh dang easy, especially with running some Something like this tech channel, freaking buying things, selling them, making sure that companies are paying us, like for this ad spot. A uh, lot of invoicing done. So uh, it did, yeah, so run a small business, no easy task. Anyways, check out FreshBooks, my friends, if you wanna get fresh. But you know what? FreshBooks also grows alongside your business so that if you go from a small business to a medium business, they're right there with you, helping you out along the way, making expensing, invoicing, everything that you do for your, your business easy peasy. So join the 24 million people who've used FreshBooks, try it free for 30 days, no catch and no credit card required. Go to freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech and enter UFD tech in the how did you hear about us section. Again, that's go to freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech and enter UFD tech in the how did you hear about us session. And with that section, session, set, ooh, words are coming out fiercely wrong today. Let's talk about something other wrong that people did. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. NVIDIA, let's talk about NVIDIA and the fact that they uh, maybe pulled an oopsie about uh, everything that's going on with their monies. And I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but uh, they revised their quarterly revenue of Q4 2018 down from an expected $2.7 billion to a whopping, uh, measly, pathetic $2.2 billion, a $500 million price cut. And in their earnings call, they said that they'll discuss 2019 financial results in Q1 2020 on February 14th. So there's got more time going on, but they revised down their total revenue from the quarter by $500 million. That is 18% that they had to adjust it. And uh, they, they, the Jensen had a few things to say. He said Q4 was an extraordinary, unusually turbulent and disappointing quarter. Uh -uh. Looking forward, we are confident in our strategies and growth drivers. The company suggested that management of the excess inventory due to cryptocurrency boom, one is expected, sure thing, but that sales of, uh, <clears throat> this is the part, this is this is the part where I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion. He said that certain high-end GPUs using Nvidia's new Turing X architecture didn't meet expectations because some customers are <clears throat> waiting for lower price points and further demonstration of RTX technology in actual games. <clears throat> waiting for lower price points and further demonstration of RTX technology in actual games. Shocker. I'm, a, I'm baffled as to why, how this could have occurred. Jensen, if you, if you know this is the reason why, you know it's not hard to drop prices to actually increase sales. You probably could have, you know, had a little bit more sales going on if you if you just uh, tweak the prices down a little bit instead of jacking them up and philandering everybody's wallet. Philandering, is that a word? Probably not. Philander, readily or frequently enter into a casual sexual relationship. It actually fits. It actually fits. He philandered everybody's wallet. Further talking about how bad the quarter was for them, Jensen said the important work we do is only possible with your support. For that, we are tremendously appreciative. This corner was a real punch in the gut, but your company is resilient, creative, and repeatedly rises to great challenges. Wait, what? Your company. Oh, he's talking to shareholders. I was like, wow, that's, he's speaking in some weird third party type system going on. Anyways, then he also confirmed that uh, $120 million in charges were there for excess DRAM and other components, which could heavily explain why they've been shoving GDDR5X on 1060s and 1070s, trying to sell those off because uh, they just have extra RAM. Who would have thunk? Thunked, thunked. I knew it was gonna be bad. I knew this was gonna be a bad episode with bad words out of my mouth. I, I mean, what, what is there to say about this? 
This is everything we've been saying on this channel since the RTX cards came out. The price is too high, the implementation of RTX is pathetic, although admittedly it's a cool technology and we wanna see it come out a bit more, it's just not there. People aren't gonna buy the RTX series and $500 million shaved off the revenue forecast. And, and we're not even talking about profit. So that that's I think that's a clear distinction I would like to make here. We're not talking about Nvidia making less money in terms of profit here. They made less revenue, which means they sold a lot less stuff. They probably could have had a lot more higher sales if they had just kept the prices of the 20 series somewhere along the lines of what people were actually expecting. Obviously, I'm not an economist who can actually tell you what forecasting looks like for cards, but I mean, at least from the audience perspective that I can garner from us having the YouTube channel, if they would have released the 2080 Ti at the same price as the 1080 Ti, probably yes, it cost them more, but they would have sold basically in, in droves. Like, I don't think anybody is upset with the RTX card's level of performance. They're upset with the performance per price. You can't give us cards that are barely better than last generation for a lot higher money. And that's, you're seeing the fruits of that now, Jensen. And at the news, as you can see here, uh, the stock market was, <laughs> feverishly ticked off with them, going from $160 at its peak on Friday to opening at $135 on Monday, a 13% decline overnight because of that uh, that announcement. So, whoo, this is gonna be a hard one for them to come back from. Just, just drop the price of the cards, really. Like, I can recommend them to everybody. I love my RTX. We'll show them on this channel, Jensen. Come on, man, just drop the price. You make the 2080i $700, and I tell everybody to buy it. Fair deal? Fair deal? It's okay, it's okay. You guys make more money, I get called to shill, things are the same. That's enough of that. There's more bad news about Nvidia stuff and that's TSMC has found a chemical contamination in their 12 and 16 nanometer wafers, which has led to phones ringing in the office during a video. It's over. So this chemical contamination is apparently affecting between 10 and 30,000 wafers for companies including Nvidia, MediaTek, Huawei, and High Silicon. And it appears that uh, while the 10 to 30,000 wafers have been affected, they're not unsalvageable in certain regards. However, it doesn't seem like it's that big of an issue since they have uh, outputs of 100,000 wafers. This is basically like three days loss of production from them. So it's not too big of a deal and it shouldn't really give us a GPU shortage. I've seen a few articles out there saying, oh no, GPU prices are gonna go sky high because Nvidia is not gonna be able to produce Turing. They lost out on three days. It might mean that you can't get your RMA for your buggy 2080 Ti as quickly as you wanted, but uh, I think we'll be fine as far as pricing goes. Did you see that little jab thrown in there? Just, you know, you gotta, you gotta shill them and stab them at the same time. <laughs> it's a new, it's a, it's a move I invented, the shill stab. You, you talk positive and then you just, casually undercut it. Anyways, you know who's casually undercutting people? Metro Exodus. And they're just basically giving the finger to Steam because uh, they decide that they're gonna be an exclusive on the Epic Game Store for the first year of the game. This is of course coming in after they had sold a bunch of pre-orders on Steam. Uh, they say that they're going to honor the pre-orders on Steam. However, it kind of seems a little messed up from like a, I guess, a back-end move because they got all of the pre-order promotion that Steam would have given to them, and then they tuck and run and get the exclusive money from Epic for putting it as an exclusive on the store. So they win-win, and I guess I can understand it from a business perspective, but that's a little shady. Like, I, I, like if I was Valve, I wouldn't want them to come back to the store. I would, I would cut all of their games from the store. Just for that move, that's, that, that's, I might be a little petty boy, but uh, you know, that's what I'm thinking here. Valve did have a response saying, we apologize to Steam customers that were expecting it to be available for sale through the February 15th release date, but we were only recently afforded the decision given limited time to let everybody know. Not, not really a cool move, in my opinion. Like, I'm okay with it being an exclusive on the Epic Game Store, but it should have been like that from the front, or they should, like, I don't know. I'm not happy about it. It does come with a price cut though, uh, selling for $50 in North America. So, uh, if cheaper money. Cheaper money. <laughs> Shut up. I know what I said. <laughs> Speaking of other bad moves, Intel selling their new CPUs without integrated graphics, the F line of uh, uh, CPUs. Uh, basically, they want to they, uh, press F in the chat because now they count cost. Nah, because now they cost more than the, uh, the CPUs that don't, that do have integrated graphics. Words, words. The uh, the news is on the street that they're retailing for about $50 more 
than the CPUs that do have integrated graphics. So they remove a feature and then charge you 10 to 15% more for it. Jeez, did you learn this from NVIDIA, Intel? No, I'm sorry, you're the progenitors of this kind of stuff, aren't you? You know who else is a progenitor of stuff? I think PUBG, Battle Royale, I don't know, that's a weird segue. Anyways, several people have found that the frame rate of your Fortnite and PUBG gameplay, which is on the Unreal Engine, is actually affecting your firing rate. If your frame rate doesn't like line up with the frame rate of the gun precisely, you actually get a slower fire rate on the gun. It's not about raw frame rate, so you don't need like 240 FPS, you just have to make sure that it's evenly divisible into the firing rate of the gun, which means that each gun has a different different scenario that you're gonna get a better firing rate on. It's a whole complicated thing. We'll leave a link in the video description if you wanna learn more about this. Uh, anyways, yeah, that's, that's kind of messed up. Gosh dang it, Unreal Engine. This is Epic Games' fault. How dare they? This is what you get for stealing Metro Exodus. And in case you like PUBG, there's a PUBG Lite coming to Thailand, which has very minimal PC specs. The recommended PC specs are a GTX 660 or Radeon HD 7870. It's free, only available in Thailand right now, but hopefully it might come available to all customers who uh, have garbage PCs. And then we reported last week that uh, AMD would be dropping as media to produce its in-house chipset. It, that still seems to be the case. X570 seems to be that something that AMD is going to produce, but they're still going to be contracting with Asmedia for other things. And then Samsung is actually gonna be making more sustainably oriented packaging, cutting out the plastic and just making sure that it's other things that can be easily recyclable. And then there's a FaceTime bug that uh, allows people to listen in on your FaceTime before you actually pick it up. So if Reese called me right now on my iPhone, he'd be able to hear me whispering sweet nothings about him into the bowl. He would hear that even if I don't answer on this. There's a tricky way to do it. Uh, you guys can figure it out, I'm sure. So, but if you have an iPhone and you don't want your Aunt Gretel calling you and then you being like, ah, I hate your Aunt Gretel. Why are you calling me right now? You're gonna break her heart. She's gonna hear it. So uh, disable your FaceTime. Aunt Gretel. Aunt Gretel. Uh, Uncle Honk. What? Uncle Honk. Honk. Uncle Honk. Uncle Honk. <laughs> Hans. Hans. I actually married a dude named Hansel. You married a dude. <laughs> I performed at the wedding. God, I was what the. Did you I I was the. I officiated it. I made it official. I married a guy named Hansel. His name was Hans Hansel. Anyways, exciting news. Dragon Ball Z is getting an action adventure game. We already talked about this. They released a uh, announcement trailer, which makes it seem like you play through all of the story up until the Frieza saga, which is pretty dope. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but it's on the PlayStation, PC, and Xbox, and it's supposed to be coming this year. I'm waiting for it, I'm hyped for it. We'll see where it goes. Hopefully it's better than I think it's gonna be. And then Resident Evil 7 has dropped a Nuvo DRM two years after launch, which is about time. Hopefully more people do this. Denuvo is the DRM that's notorious for slowing down the games and giving pirates faster ships because they, uh, they don't have to deal with the DRM on the game. I mixed metaphors there. This is a weird episode. And then, are you ready for some Zen 2 stuff? I know you are because our video yesterday performed really freaking well. You guys really love that one. Anyways, ASRock has filed reports with the EEC, Eurasian Economics Committee, about nine different X570 motherboards coming out soon with Zen 2 support. Nine different, <laughs> what did I just do? Did you see that? Oh my gosh. This episode of Hot News is brought to you by my insanity. Yeah, 9x57, I'm done. I'm so done with this episode. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of everything we talked about. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Check out FreshBooks if you're interested in actually running your business effectively with the cloud-based invoicing accounting software. It's pretty dope. Freshbooks.com forward slash UFD tech. And hit the like button, subscribe. Love to see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. I'm, ru I'm rusty. <laughs>